One of the most important jobs of a medical physicist is to ensure that you know what dose is being given to your equipment, including a chamber or your ionization chamber. And so part of this is understanding the equipment and the factors needed to take into consideration to actually determine the true dose within your chamber. And so you may get a list of questions of different factors, how they're used, and it's imperative for not just this test, but also your knowledge as a medical physicist to know and understand all of these factors in why they work and in what way you can manipulate them the best understand the phenomenon that's going on. So to begin, what corrections are needed to turn a percent ionization curve for an electron to a percent depthose curve? Notice we said for an electron, what is the replacement factor? What is the in-scatter effect? The obliquity effect? What is the gradient factor? Describe the fluence correction and what changes occur if you have a parallel plate chamber. So to answer the first question here, for an ionization chamber, you have to correct for the restricted mass stopping power ratio of water to air. So that is, if you remember in your studies, the L over rho, and of course that's going to be water to air. And so this is a function of mean energy and depth. And you also need to account for the replacement factor, which we're going to cover here soon. So this does differ a little bit between electrons and photons. I will let you do your own research there. So what is the replacement factor, this P replacement? So this is essentially dependent on air cavity diameter and mean electron energy. It accounts for in scatter. I'm just going to point here. So the replacement factor accounts for in scatter, obliquity, and the gradient effect. So we're going to talk about those here right now, but it's important to know what this P replacement actually does. And the fact that these three things are all built into P replacement. So first, what is the in scatter effect? So essentially it increases the electron fluence in the chamber cavity because the electrons scattering out of the air cavity are less than expected in intact medium. So that is the, it essentially increases the fluence, which ultimately will increase your dose. You need to take into account the in-scatter effect. So now the obliquity effect. So now this decreases the fluence in the cavity because the electrons travel in straight lines and air cavities and instead of the oblique paths, like without the air cavity. So you have one effect that increases fluence here, and you have another factor here that decreases fluence. And for the most part, to be honest, these things, to my knowledge, do cancel each other out, but we still need to know and understand these things. So the gradient factor is the displacement, an effective point of measurement. So this is equal to 0.5 RCAV. Now this is a radius of the air cavity, not just the radius of the chamber itself. And so that is of course dependent on the cavity radius, mean energy, and the gradient factor there. So what is, and again, all these, are in P replacement. So they may not necessarily, you know, mention, they may just simply say, what is the replacement factor? And you got to know that it's P replacement, and then it has all three of these effects in it. They may not necessarily spell it out like we did here, but it's important for you to know what goes in each and every one of those variables within TG51. That is absolutely imperative, not only for your career, but for this exam, because they will absolutely ask you any single detail that is in that report. So what is the fluence correction? So this accounts uh, for the in-scattering and obliquity effect as well. And then finally, um, pretty much what we have here is I don't necessarily have to go. I don't have to draw that again, but 
these things you have to consider when taking your percent ionization to percent depth dose. And then finally, what if you have a parallel plate chamber? So depending on if you have low energy electrons, you are supposed to use the plate parallel chamber or parallel plate, the same thing. So the P fluence and the P gradient can be ignored for parallel plate. However, the, excuse me there, your L over rho, that needs to be applied. That one you do in fact need regardless of what chamber you are using. And so also an importance is that your effective point of measurement is on the front surface of your chamber. So if you have any questions, please let me know these things you do kind of have to dive somewhat deep in them to really understand what all these factors are, but it is important that you know those. If you have any questions, post below. I would love to help where I can. Best of luck studying, and we'll see you in the next one.